Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, I mean, as I was talking just now to Sister Unita, Sister Unita is actually in Indonesia. Is in, she's in Indonesia, right? And she's joining us, and she was with us before. Um, and it is important that I hope to, well, encourage people to really be to understand Islam right from the very basic. A lot of people are so concerned with the small, small things. Is this halal? Is this haram? Is this, you know, are we allowed to do this? It's all, for me personally, sisters, if Islam is about halal and haram only, we don't need the Prophet to tell us what to do. Isn't it true? That means Allah will literally tell us in the Quran, so Al-Baqarah, number one, do this, number two, do that, number three, do this, and then, and, and halal, this halal, this haram, it's very clear cut. You do not need any prophet to tell us if Allah actually wanted to make Islam very black and white. Yeah. Now this is important that we 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 develop this sense of um, love for Allah. We de develop try to develop this foundation that we try to build, inshallah, in order for all of us to try to be um, a good practicing Muslim. Right. In fact, the word "good practicing" is actually quite irrelevant, isn't it true? Because if you actually know what Islam means itself, it's, it's, it's a com it means it's a complete submission to Allah, right? You do not need to quantify or sorry qualify it by saying, "Oh, I need to be a good practicing Muslim," um, because a Muslim itself it, itself it, it self implied that uh, uh, this person is completely submitting to Allah, right? Remember, you may have forgotten this, right? We have done before about the, um, quickly we go through it before before we uh, uh, run through the topic about today for, of Aqidah, right? About the seven conditions of Shahada, right? It's not just about me and you uh, in our Tashahud, Tashahud say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashadu Anna Muhammad Abdul Rasul, without, without understanding the full implications, right? There must be seven conditions which is attached to this, right? What are the seven conditions of us of us knowledge, right? When we say la ilaha illallah, right? There must be <coughs> excuse me. First of all, a negation, right? La ilaha illallah. None has the right to be worshipped by Allah. This knowledge. None has the right to be worshipped is it, it is the negation. Illa Allah. Illa Allah, right? Except Allah. So it is affirmation. So None, none, we must worship nobody else. This is a negation. And affirmation is accept Allah, illa Allah. Right? And this knowledge must is very important that we, we understand who Allah is, right? The names of Allah, right? Tawheed and all this. We, we need to understand this, right? That is why for the new Muslims, right? They they went through sometimes months and months and sometimes years of eliminating the truth or oh, sorry the falsehood and accepting only one path which is islam and may allah guide them to the right path and we just have alhamdulillah uh, one brother who took shada just a few recently very uh, one or two weeks ago um i was helping him yesterday in the in the good street mosque um yeah because again he he he's very focused he was a christian before um Sometimes, or many times, many of them had to sacrifice their families, the love of the families in order to, subhanAllah, to go on the right path. And they do it willingly because they understood Islam. This is the only path that leads to paradise, which is the top topic for in the afternoon about what are the signs that you and I must have in order to enter paradise, right? So these are the things that we, we hopefully that we, we understand, right, the seven conditions of shahada. The first one is knowledge about la ilaha illallah. Second one, right, besides after knowledge is, of course, that, that certainty, that yaqeen. You must be certain, as certain as, well, all of us are going to die one day. It might be tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next year. But for sure, all of us is going to die. I mean, I do not want to live until 100 years old when I can't, I can't even get out of the bed properly. I can't even walk properly. I need people to help me. I do not want to live like that. Isn't it true, right? Um, but, and no one wants to live um, when all your friends have died. Isn't it true, right? And this is a fact that we, that certainty that all of us are going to die, right? Um, so this is something in which 
we must be certain what we say la ilaha illallah that none has the right to worship Allah the certainty right when you have this certainty then when you are exposed to for example um in some cultural events where they will go to the graves and worship the grave right or they have these uh, events like in indonesia for example where they have this uh, ceremony uh, perhaps on the first of muharram right i think right um, and where they offer food to the uh, the guardians of the of the sea in a, a, a place called parang trites in the beach right and all this is completely against la ilaha illallah is it true right um, I remembered also when there was an event, I think it was in 2000, 2006, Alhamdulillah, we were there. I don't say Alhamdulillah, in sense that we were there to help, but actually it was an event of the, the, the volcano uh, erupted in Indonesia. Um, it was a very uh, big uh, disaster, yeah. right? I saw houses being buried and all this, and Alhamdulillah, we sent our uh, help to them. Um, but... Sadly, right, the Sultan in in Indonesia, right, uh, in um, this this called Yogyakarta, the, the Sultan, right, um, he ordered the um, the sacrifice of an animal, of a, a sheep or a cow, to and the animal was supposed to be thrown inside the crater of the volcano to stop the uh, to appease the guardian of the volcano. When we say guardian of volcano, Subhanallah. And we say in our prayer, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, it must be our Rabb, isn't it? There's nobody else, right? So you, you must have this yaqeen, yeah? About la ilaha illallah, this is the second condition, right? First condition, again, knowledge. Second is yaqeen, right? Which is certainty. Third one, acceptance. Acceptance of whatever condition that Allah has put us or to that we will have to obey, right? So whatever this Allah has revealed in the Quran, it's not up to you and I to decide, um, okay, this I will not obey, the hijab, I will not obey, the rest, okay, I, I will try to obey my best. No, subhanAllah, right? You must accept every implications that Allah has revealed in the Quran, right? This is called acceptance. Number four, submission. After acceptance, then you submit, you obey, you follow as best as you can. Of course, none of us are perfect. We will fall into a lot of shortcomings. This is when we, we make dua to Allah every day, yeah, for our shortcomings, right? When we are not even supposed to um, talk about other people, especially the social media, right? People are so busy, right? Or the influ influencers talking about other influencers, you backbite about other people and all this. And all this happened to the social media. And all this, when you went in Surah uh, Al-49, verse number 12, it clearly stated about if you talk about others, it's as if you're eating the dead meat. Um, of your of your brother, so all these kind of things it, you must submit. You cannot say that oh I'm I'm, I'm weak. I, I I need to talk about others. No, you must not do that because at the end of the day, if you did not submit, then the consequence of all this backbiting and slandering, you know from hadith about a person being bankrupt, right? Uh, a bankrupt person is not a person who has done nothing at all. He did all the good deeds. But all these good deeds need to go to the people whom he has landed or who he has talked back upon in this life, right? All these have been informed to us very clearly, right? And so this is called submission, the fourth condition of shahada. The fifth condition is that the, about the truthfulness. Whatever in, this, in the Quran is the truth, right? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Allah said, right? He is the khatam al nabiyin he is the seal of the prophets. He is the seal of the prophets. That means there's the last prophet. There's no prophet to get somebody like Gulam Ahmad, right? Who who got into this group called Ahmadiyya, right? Um, would be the um, what do you call it? Um, as a, another prophet, right? Um, so this is something that all of us must um, abide by, right? You and I. When we think about how Musa alayhi was saved by Allah, right? When was it? In on the first, on the Ashura, right? The day of Ashura, right? when Musa alayhi was saved by Allah from the Pharaoh. Uh, to think that the sea parted like that to make way for Musa alayhi and the, the, his companions to pass 
And in the end, when they passed, the pharaoh and, and his soldiers, they were uh, immediately, right, um, the sea uh, wiped them or drowned them after that, right? Um, is something we need to uh, know is the truth, right? How can a person, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Again, in Surah Al-Isra, right? About uh, Isra Mi'raj. About how Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam traveled from Mecca to Medina and Medina to, to get to see Allah, not see, to meet Allah, right? Um, and in order to get the prayer reduced from 50 to 5, can, can, came back and came back to Mecca to announce to the people about in, in one night. How can it be possible? I'm talking about logically, right? But this is what Allah said, and it, it did happen, and we have to believe it, right? How can Isa alayhi salam was born without a father? How can Adam alayhi salam was born without any father, without any mother? It, all these are very simple with Allah, right? So in, in terms of Allah, you can't use logic, right? Because with Allah, Allah can do anything, isn't it true? Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, right? He is able to do anything. And this is something that we do need to, to, to know that everything what Allah says in the Quran is the truth, right? With different nations, how uh, uh, um, Prophet um, Yunus know, alayhi salam was swallowed by the will. How can it be possible if you are swallowed by the will, you don't die, right? And all these kind of stories that is the truth that we need to believe, right? So this is it, right? The fifth condition is the truthfulness, right? Of la ilaha illallah. Number six, it is that it must be said with sincerity. You only say it for the sake of Allah. This is where um, in places like, for example, Singapore, in my country, I knew because I visited the, um, there's a new Muslim center, I think called Darul, um, I don't remember, right? There's a name for it, right? A new Muslim center um, uh, in, in Singapore. And I visited them and, I, and they said um, that, well, sadly, majority of the people who took shahada was because of marriage, right? Because of the, you want to marry a Muslim girl, then you say this shahada. And this is something in which when you are not sincere, then you will have problems uh, in your um, la ilaha illallah, in terms of your prayer, in terms of submission and all this, right? I remember I met one of my classmates, I was a dentist in Singapore. In my dental school, one of the person, well, they, they were boyfriends and girlfriends. Uh, the girl was um, was a um, Muslim, right? And they got married, um, obviously because of um, falling in love, right? So many years later, I count, encountered them again, and Subhanallah, right? Um, yeah, the prayers were not complete after so many years. What excuse can you give to Allah, knowing? Actually, that um, the prayer is going to be the first thing that we're going to be enc encountering to all, uh, you're going to be asked on the day of judgment is a, is a salah, right? So, this is about um, the six uh, criteria, right, or conditions of shahada, which is about sincerity, right? You need to say, La ilaha illallah only for Allah's sake, right? And the last one, of course, the number seven is that you you love what you are saying and implications behind it, right? Subhanallah, this is how I am trying my best, inshallah, I, I, of course, to myself still today, right? To ensure that um, whatever things that we do, we love, we love the fact that we are invited by Allah to meet him at least five times a day, right? We love the fact that Allah actually has chosen us to be a Muslims. And the love of La ilaha illallah must be there, sisters, in order for all of us to maintain our acts of worship until our last breath. Right? It is difficult to do something like a big to treat it like a like a ritual. Um you might end up well not not being grateful to Allah as an intro, right? The fact that Allah has chosen you and I, alhamdulillah, to uh to be a Muslim, right? Inshallah to die instead of Islam, right? Itself is a huge honor, right? Because didn't Allah say, Kuntum khara ummatin ukhrijas li nas in Surah number 3, verse 110. You are the best nations ever raised up for mankind, right? Why? 
ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. You enjoin good, you forbid evil and you believe in Allah. Right? So we we do need to have this ability to understand, right? The basic foundation of Islam, right? How can you try to learn about um other things or this hadith, is it halal, haram as I said just now? When you don't even understand about the conditions of shahada, right? That is why I'm coming back, right? back because Ramadan is coming, inshallah, in about well less than six months, right? Now is I think the twenty something of uh, Zul, no, twenty something of the uh, Rabi ul Awal, isn't it true? Rabi ul Awal, is, is, as you know, is a month number three, right? Ramadan is month number nine, so we actually have well uh, close to almost five months, right, before Ramadan. So. It's time for all of us to come back again to the basics, inshallah. So today's topic, inshallah, is about aqidah. Aqidah is so important, sisters, that sadly a lot of people they might well they might know about it just by name, uh, by just the uh, superficial things, but without us understanding it, right? We actually will fall short in terms of our acts of worship. Right, and this is something that we we all must really, really, truly understand about aqidah. Right. So, what does aqidah means? Right. Aqidah literally means is our creed. Right. What we firmly believe in. Right. Um, we know from um, some of the of the um, articles that it comes from the word aqidah, aqidah, which means um, it conveys the meanings of certainty. Um, affirmation, confirmation, etc. Right? So, this is actually what we must believe in, right? And we know it's the six articles of faith, right? What is the difference between aqidah and iman? Right? All of us must know. Aqidah, as I said just now, is this, is this firm belief with certainty, right? For example, right? For sure, I know it's a silly example, right? If you live in summer, for example, the milk in your fridge outside, right? For sure, within one or two days, it will go grow bad. Isn't it true? It will it will smell, and you cannot drink it because it has. It, I know because I always feed my cat uh, milk, right? Uh, even after one or two days, even that now it's getting colder, it still becomes very bad. It smells bad. I need to change every day. And th that is for certain it will happen. It is only with <laughs> all those miracles that it will not happen like that, right? And this is a certainty, right? You have an ice cream, right, sisters? Ice cream, right? You take out from the fridge. What happened to the ice cream? 100%, right? It will melt. It will melt, and that that certainty that you have, oh, that's why, oh, that's why, because ice cream will melt. I'll put ice cream in, in the in the fridge because it won't so that it won't melt. Isn't it true? Right? You have ice, right? In a hot summer, for sure. If ice is on the table outside, right, ice will melt in a few seconds, even, right. And this is how certain it is, and this is how our our aqida is that that certainty that we must have. In order for us to continue to uh, submit ourselves to Allah, right? So for me personally, aqidah um, and iman must come before your submission, right? The, those five uh, pillars of Islam: shahada, the salah, zakat, um, fasting in Ramadan, and the hajj for those who can afford it, right? So this is how. We we establish ourselves by this strong belief is certainty about aqidah. So as I said, aqidah is belief, right? Iman is this belief which is which must be followed by actions of the words coming from the mouth and actions of our limbs, right? So it's it's no point saying to me or saying to your friends that yes, I believe in their judgment. And then we are not preparing for it. Isn't it true? Right? Because Allah did remind us in Surah number 59, verse number 18. Oh, you truly really believe, have taqwa to Allah, fear Allah, and let every person look 
forward to what he has prepared for tomorrow and have taqwa to Allah. Indeed, Allah is well aware of what you do. So preparations, right? For example, Sister Yunita, you are teaching in the university, right? You know that with your students, right? Um, when exam is coming in one month time or three weeks time, you must prepare. You must prepare. It's difficult for anybody right. to pass the exam, isn't it yeah. true? Right? And this is something that you, you know. And all of us know. We were in school before. If you don't prepare, chances are that our, our passing is almost zero, isn't it true? Because there are many things to... Uh, many days, and as you and I know, when, in terms of dunya, right, we always spend so much time preparing, right? Even though, right, uh, uh, we don't sleep, it's okay, right? Exam is coming. What about the hereafter? It's the biggest examination of all, right? And yet many people are still in dreamland, right? That they are not even preparing for the um, for this uh, the, the hereafter, where we know it is 50,000 years long in journey. We know about the numerous, numerous, numerous um, questions which we are going to be asked, right? Every single penny that we have, right? Uh, in Indonesia, every single rupiah that you have, right? Will be asked by Allah, where have you spent this, right? Everything will be turned, uh, will be asked by Allah. And these are the things that you and I we do need to actually uh, understand, right? Um, and and you and I, we do need to really um, ensure, right, that they prepare for the hereafter. Okay. Now, um, now, so let us begin to understand about aqidah, right? About the six articles of faith, because when we know this for sure, inshallah, right, with Allah's guidance will be able to move forward to the next step, which is to submit to Allah, right? So this is Aqidah, right? So you understand, right? It is about our six articles of faith. And I say, it's not just believe. I believe that UK is the best country in the world. I mean, it's what I believe, but people, many people might, be, might say no, is it true? And that is just believe. But Aqidah is even more stronger than, as I said just now, if you leave an ice, right, ice outside the fridge, within a few minutes, right, it will melt. And that is for sure it will happen. And that certainty that you must have, right? So the first one, of course, right, is to believe in who? In Allah, right? Um, of course, we, know, we need to know who Allah is, right? And that is why... Um, for example, uh, in Surah uh, Al-Ikhlas, uh, um, because the Quraysh, if you know, read about the Tafsir, how was it revealed? The Quraysh, they were um, boasting about the gods. Oh, my God is Lat, my God is Uzza. So one fine day, they turned, everybody turned to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Muhammad, tell us, who is your God? Yeah, because they were quite irritated that they have all these gods. Right, they have all these gods, and yet our Prophet Muhammad said that there's only one, right? Not many gods. So they, they turn to him, right? Sallam, and they ask, So Muhammad, tell us who is your God? Of course, he doesn't know how to answer. Then Allah revealed this immediately. Ul say, Huwallahu ahad. He is Allah, ahad, one and only. Not Lad, not Uzza. Right? Um, only one. Can you imagine if you have to, you and I know, right? Sorry to say this, sisters, right? A father and a mother, right? Two people who may be responsible for your upbringing. For sure, right? There might be situations where both are angry with each other because I say this, but you say this, right? You don't, so there's no, uh, when you are controlled by two people, in many instances, there might be arguments with one another. Right, as in who is supposed to be uh, doing this, who's supposed to be doing that, isn't it true? In terms of uh, upbringing of the children, right? Therefore, you only have one, right? Qul say, who Allah? He is Allah, one and only. Allah, as you know, it literally means Al Ilah, that the one, the only one whom we should worship, Al Ilah, right? He is Allah, the only one, not anybody else, 
right? Um, and he is, what do you call it? Sorry, my cat. Always want to see what I'm doing. Um, Allah, and, and, and uh, he's the only one, right? The unique one. Allahu Samad. As Samad means the self sufficient master, right? In which he doesn't need to be maintained. We need him. He doesn't need any one of us. So if any, none of us are worshipping him, it doesn't make Allah less great. And if all of us are doing five times a day, doing all the tahajjud, fasting Mondays and Thursdays, yes, alhamdulillah, but it doesn't make Allah more great, right? He doesn't need to be served, doesn't need to be fed, doesn't need to be maintained, right? Because it's Allah. He's the one who maintaining us. Can you imagine this if, he, if, he, if he's resting? Because like the Christian said in the um, Bible, isn't it true? Allah created the earth, heavens and earth in six days and he rested on the seventh day, right? It's impossible because um, Allah also said in Ayat Al-Kursi, isn't it? Allah la ilaha illahu wa al-hayl qayyum la ta'khudhu sinatun wa la nam. He doesn't slumber nor does he sleep, right? Right? Um, at his kursi, his 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 chair or his footstool extends from the heavens to the earth, and he has no, he doesn't feel any fatigue, any tightness to maintain all his creations. Right? So he's he's he's, he's self-sufficient. Another meaning of al samad is he's he's eternal. There's no beginning, there's no end. Right? And this is who Allah is. Right? Um Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. Right? He wasn't born, nor does he give birth. Right? So there's no beginning and there's no end. So don't need to think about it because Shaitan is always telling, ah, what is before Allah? There's nothing. Right? We know Allah created a pen, pen as a first creation. The qalam, right? Allah told the pen to write. The pen asked Allah, what do I write? And Allah said, write whatever things that is going to happen to my creations. And this happened 50,000 years before the creations in heaven and earth. So all of us, our presence here, sisters, right? That you are listening to me, alhamdulillah. May Allah reward us for our seeking of knowledge. Have been written down by Allah many, 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 many million years ago. Right? And this is important that we understand this. Right? So, so how can Jesus be son of God? Right? It doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, the last one, there's no equivalent to him, right? And we, we must understand this. So if a person has a nose, has an ear, has an eyes, has a hair, has a body, is a human being, it cannot be God, right? I remembered when I went to um, Poland um, in Krakow, one of the cities, how they worshipped Mariam, right? And they, they did some silly ritual on his and, and his Mariam's because Poland actually in general people are very poor, but they, they decorated this uh, statue of Mary uh, coming down in diamonds, right? And subhanAllah, it's completely bizarre, right? And this is something that so this is this is about Allah. There's no equivalent to Allah. So if if this being has a or is this um, animal is a cow, is a cow. We don't worship a cow. Right, you know, in some parts of India, they worship uh, the Hindus. They worship the cow, right? In uh, in this place called Bali in Indonesia, where most of them are Hindus, uh, people are quite poor in general, right? Especially now with the COVID nineteen, there's no tourists, um, but the cows were living in a very luxurious state, and this is something in which is is bizarre, right? Always remember, sisters, right? All of us have met Allah before. All of us. Right, remember in surah number seven, right? In verse number one seven two, right? And we know from the tafsir of this surah, yeah, surah seven one seven two, in which Allah wiped or swept the back of Adam and Adam. All of us appeared. Our soul has appeared in front of Allah in one straight line, right? And um. So let me find for you this surah, surah number seven, right, in verse number 170, which we have gone through quite a number of times, right? وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ 
wa ashhadahum ala anfusihim alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala syahidna in an taqulu yaumal qiyamati inna kunna an hadha ghafilin i remember when your lord brought forth from the children of adam from their loins their seed and made them testify to themselves am i not your lord am i not your rob right Allah said, Allah to be Rabbikum. Am I not your Rabb? We're going to talk about later about, about Tawheed, uh, uh, the three kinds of Tawheed, yeah? because believing in Allah, believe in Allah is so important, sisters, right? Um, am I not your Rabb? And and we say, we said yes. And Allah warned us, right? So we said yes, we testify, we bear witness that you are our Rabb. And Allah said, lest you should stay on the day of resurrection, verily we have been made unaware of this. It's absolutely important that we have to understand this verse. That we have promised Allah, we will recognize Him as our Rob. Rob means, as you know, it's not just Lord, according to all these translations. Rob means, as you know, the creator, the maintainer, the sustainer, the one who guides us, the one who protects us. Everything is Allah. So that means literally, and this is, this is we're going to talk about this, the three kinds of Tawheed or three branches of Tawheed, right? Tawhid ar Again, when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin, make sure we know what it means. Right? Because we praise Allah, all praise and thanks go to Allah. He is a Rabb, who is Allah? Rabbil Alamin. He is a Rabb of Alamin. He is the one who maintains, sustains. You said this, we said this, and yet when our boss tell us, oh, make sure you, you cannot leave your table, right? You need to work. You cannot go for a break for about three hours. Then you miss your 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 your. And every day it happened to you, right? You miss your the whole. You miss. I remember in in UK time is going to change tonight, right? So in the middle of in in the middle of uh, winter, as you know, um, the uh, the whole is about twelve. Asar maybe about one forty five. Maghrib was about three fifty, right? And Isha is about 5.30, for example, in the middle of, and in December, right? In uh, the 22nd of December, in the middle of uh, the winter solties, right? And when when your boss say, right, for these four hours, you need to mend the phone, don't leave this place, you must not do anything, must, and then you stick to your boss's plans for every day. And yet you pray and you say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. All praise and go and all praise and thanks goes to Allah. He's the Rabb of Alamin. He's the provider. And yet you are we are so controversial in our opinion of Allah that we we think that is our boss, our employer who, who gives us the money. We forget everything comes from Allah. When we switch on the tap, the water comes from Allah. It's not from Thames water, it's from Allah. When you open the fridge, Food is there, alhamdulillah. It is from Allah. It's not from our pocket. In your bank account, alhamdulillah, the money there. It's from Allah. We are able to go to Umrah, right? It's from Allah. His invitation. Not that we have money. We, we have a lot of people with money, but they haven't been invited to go to Umrah or even to Hajj. Right? This is called Tawhid ar We must understand this, sisters, right? When you believe in Allah, we must also believe the fact that Allah is the one who maintains. I can't say to uh, say this many times, right? If a doctor is able to cure me for my illness, I cannot say thank you, doctor, because of you, I'm able to be able to walk again. I'm able to do this again. It's not from the doctor. Yes, you should thank him. Thank you for your for your help, right? That's it. Full stop. Don't over exaggerate your thankfulness to the doctor because the first thing we must say is Alhamdulillah. He, and who is who is Allah? Yeah, who is our Rabb? He's a Rabbil Alameen, right? He's the one who maintains, sustains, and everything. And when we know this, sisters, then we we, we would know what to do. Because some brothers brothers were asking me, oh, I have this job, I can't do this, I can't do that. Then that's not the job. You quit the job. As simple as that. How can you explain to Allah that they are judgment? Oh Allah, I can't pray because. Um, I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to leave my office. Right? There's so many people around. There's no place to pray. How can you explain to Allah when our Rabb is the one who provides us with the eyes, the ears, the feet, the hands, the brains, the roof to, to live under? If we don't have Allah, we'll be nothing. 
right? So this we when unless we, we understand this, right? We don't have we would we do not need to have things, for example, in my culture, right? In the house before we enter the house. Some houses have Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. All this is pro to protect the house. Why do we need this to protect the house? Why do you need ayatul kursi in or the word Allah in your car, right? To protect the car. You don't need this because Allah is our Rabb. He's the one who is going to protect us, not these uh, Quranic verses. Right? So the people are many people, right? They would, for example, right, wear this amulet, right? Or I must wear this amulet. My mother said, or my grandmother said, this will protect me. Nobody can protect us except Allah. And we must really truly understand this. So this is Tawhid ar -Rububiyah. The next one, Tawhid as sama wa sifat. Right? His names and attributes. Always remember, sisters, Allah is always there. Above the seven heavens on his throne, suitable for the majesty. He cannot be everywhere, right? Underneath my chair, in my bag. You are implying, because, because when I ask some people, Allah is everywhere. Allah is not everywhere. He cannot be in his creations. He is too great to be in his creations. He is too pure to be in his creations. Isn't it true? Right? For example, in some verses, we can just pick, I just can pick any verses, Surah number 30 to as sajada right? Um, in verse number four, for example, right? I'm just picking a random surah that has um, the ability to describe about Allah and where he is, right? Um, verse number four. Allahu alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arda wa ma baynahuma fi sittati ayya min thumma stawa ala al-arsh. Right? Allah, it is He who created the heavens and the earth and all that is between them in six days and then He rose over istawa. Right? The throne. Right? In a manner, in a manner that suits the majesty. So He's there. But, remember we talk about, about, about um, uh, the... Uh, so Al Ikhlas, the last bit, there's no equivalent to him. My wife is in the kitchen, do you know what she's doing? I can hear something, right? Do you know what she's doing? Because my eyes cannot see. But Allah is the all seer. In Arabic, we know it is Al Basir. He is he can see everything, even though he's dead. He did not need to be next to me to know that I'm not praying, for example. He did not need to see next to me to see that I have an affair with somebody. I mean I don't, in, in that way, we need to understand about his names. He is as samir right? He is the all-hearer. He is al-alim, right? The all-knower. He is the um, al-khabir, the all-aware, right? So all these names we need to know. He is ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim. He will forgive us, right? All we need to do is not to be scared of him, but we need to come back to him and truly turn up, pour our heart to him and ask back for his forgiveness. Right? So all this we need to understand. Right? He is Al-Halim, the one who is forbearing. He is patient. He could have just allowed us to die tomorrow without us, us repenting, but he gave us time and time to come back to him. Al-Halim. So all these things, we must we must know it. Right? Last one is of course Tawhid al uluhya oneness of worship. You only worship Allah, not the grave, not the saints, not even your shuyukhs, right? You see many of the Sufis and all these um, Shia worshipping the Imams and all this. We only worship Allah. We, we are not, even Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prevented you and I from, from, from standing up to anybody. Right? So, so, so that means when somebody comes in, oh, I want to show respect, I stand up. You do not need to do that. Right? And the person in hadith, the person who expects somebody to stand up for you, Muhammad Sallam said, let him uh, reserve his, his seat in the fire. Right? And this is very important you understand this. Muhammad Sallam stood up, yes, for to show respect for the, um, I think it was a Jewish funeral, right? Uh, the uh, ceremony, or the Jewish, uh, um, there was a ceremony and a coffin passed by. He stood up to show respect and that is because he wanted to, right? Uh, not because he's worshipping the person, right? Or he, he, he shows respect for uh, a Jewish person, but he just wants to show uh, his sympathy for the person who deceased and the family, right? 
So this is very important, sisters. The first one is called uh, the, the Aqidah, belief in Allah. In what we have discussed is, see, this topic is so deep. There are many things I can talk about, but because of time, I'll have to move on to the second belief, right? Believing in the uh, uh, the, the uh, prophets of Allah, right? We know that many prophets in the Quran is mentioned 25. Of course, there are much, much more than that because every nation, Allah is so fair, Allah is so just, he would send a prophet, right? And always remember, sisters, it's not just about, oh, Yusuf is so, so handsome, right? It's not about that. We need to understand how we can learn from the prophets, the stories that are about the prophets. So Surah Yusuf, salam, sorry, Surah Yusuf, sorry, of, of Prophet Yusuf, salam, Surah number 12, um, it was revealed right, on the basis of the question of the children of Israel, right? They think that the Prophet doesn't know anything. So as a Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa um, So how did the children of Israel ended up in Egypt? How did the children of Israel ended up in Egypt? So Allah revealed immediately in the most finest form of Arabic language, um, Quran is already, already so beautiful. Right, but Surah Yusuf has is on another level. If you ask many scholars, right, uh, in the language form, right, and it was revealed how well, as you know, right, Yaqub salam, right, eventually uh, has um, Yusuf, right, Yusuf alayhi salam into all these different trials and all this from being thrown in the well and then being sold into slavery, being after that being, um, um. Bought by the master, he was seduced by the master's wife when he grew older because he was so good looking. And then after that, he went to prison because he didn't want to, he'd rather be in prison than be to disobey Allah by committing zina. And then eventually he was elevated to the level of the Minister of Finance. So all these sisters, it's not just about, oh yes, amazing story, right? Even the Christians come up with this, what Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat is not true complete mess of the story but what lessons must we learn from this right to trust Allah to be patient to Allah even when he was in his, in his prison he was making that wise isn't it true so it doesn't, doesn't matter where you are you need to remind each other about the truth we know for example wal asri right surah al asr wal asri inna al insana la fi khusr by time man is at a loss you will only be at a loss if you don't co if, if you do not do these four things these four things must be done, right? Illa ladina amanu. Except those who believe. Wa amilu salihat. Yeah, and do good righteous deeds. Wa tawasaw bil haq. And remind one another about the truth, like what we are doing now. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. And remind one another about patience, which is which what we are doing now, right? Even this surah, right? Allah mentioned about illa ladina amanu. The belief must come first. Then the good writers did. That's why we talk about this aqidah first. The belief must come first, right? And then with this belief, then we we are able to do it willingly, right? The good writers did, inshallah, right? So the prophets, all this we must learn, right? Who they are, the the followers, right? Prophet, the prophet, um, for example, we know um, the the nations of Ad, what what. What is who is a prophet? Prophet Hud alayhi salam, nations of Thamud, yeah, Prophet is Saleh, right? Alayhi salam. We need to know all the stories, the lessons you can learn. And this is very important, sisters, right? That they existed uh, in different nations, they brought different laws to the people. Of course, the most important law, which is common to all the nations, is oneness of God, yeah, Tawheed, which we discussed just now, right? So, prophets, we must believe. Yeah, and of course we have the best Prophet Hamlah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who inshallah we make dua that we will be able to meet him, right? We 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 make dua that he will pass us the cup to drink from the pond of Al Kawthar. If you drink from this, remember inshallah we were to drink from this this Al Kawthar, right? The river or the pond, we will not be thirsty again, inshallah. So these are the things that we uh we, we make dua that Allah will grant us with, uh, with the ability to get his Shafa'a, right? His intercession on the day of judgment, right? So we had this Prophet وسلم, in whom on the day of judgment, everybody say, Ya nafsi nafsi. They were so worried. They say to, we will say to ourselves, right? Oh, myself, myself, we are so worried, right? We were going around 
like a madman, right? Like you are in drunkard state, worried about your deeds. But we have Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whom we have never met, but he is so concerned about you and me. He said, Ya Ummati, Ya Ummati, O my nation, my nation. He's so concerned about us. And he even said, we discussed many times about how he told the Sahaba, I long to meet my beloved. And the Sahaba was quite uh, upset. What, aren't you your beloved? No. My beloved are those who will come after you. They have not seen me, but they believe in me. And this is the thing that we, we hope, right? That we will be able to meet him in Jannah, right? And we'll be able before that even we get his intercession here on the Day of Judgment. Okay? Believe in prophets. Next one, believe in the books of Allah, right? The books, not just about the Quran, but the, the original books, not about the Bible, but the Injil, right? The Torah that has not been altered by human beings, right? We know from a, a hadith when Umar ibn Khattab al-Anhu found the Torah, right? He was quite glad and he was discussing with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, I'm going to read the Torah. I found it. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's face turned red. And he said, it's enough for us to read the Quran. The Quran is the truth. The rest of all has been altered. Why do we want to read things that have been altered? Right? So important that we, we stick to the Quran and understand it, right? And not only that, we need to read, understand, and we call it tadabu, remember? Read with a proper tajweed, you know, proper understand, because remember, any single word that we we recite, if we pronounce wrongly, it might change the meaning. If we say Allahu Akbar, it means what? Allah is the greatest. But if we say Allahu Akbar, prolong the beginning part, you are questioning, is Allah the greatest? So all these things that we do, we do need to improve ourselves, right? Especially in the understanding of the Quran, right? And the implementation, and it's called tadabbur, right? And we make the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this ability to have tadabbur, right? Now with that, we come to the next one, belief in the, um, the angels of Allah. What we have, the angels guarding the, for example, the gate of hellfire, which is called Malik. The angels guarding the gates of paradise called Ridwan. We know of the, the, the most important one who brought us the revelations uh, was um, Jibril alayhi salam. We know for sure in hadith, at this moment, angel Israfil is holding the trumpet in his mouth, waiting for Allah's order, right? We have the Mikael, right, who brought, bring the rain and all this. We have the angel of death, of course, Malatul Maut, Malaikatul Maut, right, angel of death. We have, of course, the right and left. In fact, in uh, these are the ones who wrote, write our deeds, good and bad deeds. Uh, we also know in Surah number 13, yeah, verse number 11, in the first part, Allah was describing that the angels of the front and the back who will guard us, right? So all these angels exist. We know we questioned by Munkar and Nakir, right? And all these angels are important, sisters, in order for all of us to understand that we are being observed. Um, Allah do not need these angels because Allah knows, remember all this Al-Alim, but the angels are for us. For example, we may not believe um, that we have done this sin. Then the angels on the left say that, look at this, it's in the record. On the 25th of October 2021, um, at about this time, you are at this place. You did this. It's all for us. And we need to all, allow all of us to get the book, right, from our right hand, right? It's in the Quran, right? Those who receive the book on the right hand will be able to enter paradise, inshallah. Now the next one, number five, is to believe. So, so for example, so if we believe in the angels, for sure, to write the good and bad deeds, for sure, we are more conscious in it. Oh, yes, nobody's looking at me now, but I know the angels will record down my good and bad deeds. So rather than sing songs that has no, no meaning, why don't we say Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Bihamdi? Then at least the angels on the right will be busy, or this person is doing the dhikr, isn't it true? Right? Rather than spend four or five hours on a social media or watching Netflix for four or five hours, why don't we do something more useful? Right? Reading the Quran, right? Reading the Sirah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? All these things are very important that we are conscious of this. Why? Because in the next belief, belief number five, right? 
Iman number five, right? It is about to believe in the day of judgment because all of us will be judged by Allah, right? Allah said in Surah number four, verse number 87, yeah. Allah la ilaha illahu la yajma'annakum illa yawmil qiyamati la rayba fi. Right? Allah, he swears upon himself, none has right to be worshipped but him. Surely he will gather you together on the day of resurrection in which there is no doubt about it. Right? La rayba fi. The day of judgment. Right? All of us will be have, we have to be accountable to our deeds. That's why we discussed many times about the last verse that was revealed in the Quran. The last verse in Surah number 2 verse number 31. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهُ ثُمَّ تُوَفَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُتْلَمُونَ Be afraid of the day when you shall be brought back to Allah. Then every person will be paid for what he has earned and they shall not be dealt with unjustly. And this is how we have to be accountable to Allah. Right? We can't call, as I said before, Islam is a way of life. So for example, I'm a solicitor by profession and I said many times, if anybody comes to see me, I ensure that, inshallah, I try my best to help you, right? You and no, no, I hate to say this, not all solicitors are, uh, are honest, right? Sometimes they ignore your work and all this. Um, just, just, just because I'm praying five times a day, doesn't mean I'm not accountable to this, even though my clients are not Muslims, right? I have to ensure that I did my best, right? I spend my hours uh, doing what I'm paid for, right? So if, for example, one of the brothers, if, they, if, if he or she works in um, okay, uh, an Uber driver, it's not, Uber driver is not a good example. Let's say you're, you're a black cab driver, right? You know that if you take a longer route, you get more money, isn't it true? Because the meets are running, right? And then uh, you deliberately, right? Because you're going from, for example, um, from... Westminster to Heathrow Airport, you deliberately, deliberately take a longer route. Would you be accountable to Allah? For sure. This is cheating. Allah is al alim, He's all know, He's al khabir, all aware of what you do. Right? So, all these kind of things we need to understand. All these be accountable to Allah on a day of judgment. Right? Everything that we say, we do. Remember, the, after we, we ask by, by Allah, the first thing we're going to be asked by Allah on the day of judgment is the prayer. After, after that, Allah is going to ask us about the four things, right? What we have, we have done with our wealth, our knowledge, our youth, and the health that Allah has given, the health Allah has given us, right? The health. So when we are in good health, what do we do? Are we spending more time to seek knowledge, to do acts of worship, right? And now at my age, at 53, right, my knees are getting weaker, um, you know, uh, things. I, I can't do things as I did, maybe. Uh, 20 years ago, right? Have you done your Hajj, have you done your Umrah, and all these kind of things, right? I can't imagine even when I was younger, I think I went to Hajj in twice in 2003, 2006, right? Alhamdulillah. Um, even then, it was very tiring for me, and I was quite young then, right? Um, so don't delay your Hajj, because at the end of the day, ask Allah to invite you to go to Hajj. So all these kind of things will be asked by Allah. If you have a lot of all this money, you, you can't say to Allah, sisters, right? Oh Allah, I didn't go to Hajj because I got no money. Then when check your records, right? You went to America, you went to China, you went to Japan, you went to Europe, you, you went, you buy about 10 pairs of Gucci shoes, you have Prada handbag, you have all these Gucci uh, things in wallet and all this. And you spend all this on this and you say you got no money to go to Hajj. And I remember I told you, right, a story of how I stayed <coughs> in a house, in a big house in Algeria, right? Um, it's a huge house. I think about six or seven rooms. You got jacuzzi and all this. Um, so I, I didn't mean to be busy about it. I just oh, you stayed near uh, Algeria is quite near uh, Mecca, as you need to compare to us. So have you been to Umrah Hajj? So he said no, I haven't been to Hajj because it's very expensive. And then hold on, you say it's expensive, but you have a huge house. It doesn't make sense. Right? So all this will be accountable to, to, we have to account to Allah on the day of judgment. Okay? Last one, number number six, is to believe in, of course, the Qatar of Allah. Right? The predestiny, that everything has been determined by Allah. Right? We can't question Allah. Right? Sisters, always remember, right? Perhaps, perhaps the things that happen to us is for our own good. Right? For example, I'm going to be very honest with you. We don't have any children. Right? My wife and I. Sad, of course. Right? But it's from Allah. 
right? What can we do, right? We just need to ask Allah to um, to grant us patience, right? And and of course, I mean, sometimes well, once in a while my wife will ask me, so who's going to take care of us when we get older? I said immediately without thinking, it's Allah. How can Allah not take care, take care of us? Because we've been taking care of our students. And this is something in which we do need to understand that, well, it's Qadr of Allah. Perhaps we, if we were to have children, then we don't have the time to help others in it, right? So all these kind of things are, are very important that we understand about Allah's Qadr and to accept it, right? Allah tests those whom he loves. And this is how we always remind each other, right? When we have all these um, things happen in our lives, we, we reflect back and we try to ask Allah to grant us patience. That's so what we learn from the Quran in Surah number um, 7, verse number 1 to 6. Rabbana afrigh alana sabran wa tawaffana muslimin. Our Rabb grant us patience and make us die in the state of Islam. Right? So patience is very important, sisters. Right? That not just about Allah's test, right? But to do good deeds, you need patience, right? Waking up in the morning, Right in the coldness in 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 UK, you, you need patience. In summer, you need to wake up at about two fifty for fajar. You need patience, right? To prevent yourself from disobeying Allah, you need patience, right? Especially living in non-Muslim country, right? Um, so so very important that you understand qadar, right? And don't say, oh, if everything has been determined by Allah, what's the point of working hard, right? People might say because the Sahaba accounted the same thing. They asked the same questions. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well. We just need to work hard for it, right? Because we don't know what, what is our fate. Remember the person who died as a martyr, died as a recite of the Quran, who those who died as a, a generous person, the three of them thought they were they were about to enter paradise, but they were dragged into hellfire because they did the, the deeds to show off. Whereas we have another group of people who killed another person who killed 99 men and he killed another man, 100 men. And Allah showed his mercy to this person because he was sincere. So never, never judge anybody. Yeah, but of course, sisters, we need to put in effort. We need to seek knowledge. We need to really uh, make dua that Allah um, shower us with his mercy, which all this we're going to talk about in about 3.30, inshallah, right? UK time. Um, so believe in the Qadr is very important. At least it gives us the, 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 the comfort, right? Well, what to do, right? Um, for example, if I have cancer, right, um, um, I just say that, well, I've done my best. I ask Allah to give me um, good health, but I still have cancer. Perhaps these this things that happened to me is able to purify my deeds. I remember the hadith about this beautiful hadith about this person who had epilepsy, right? And every time she had epilepsy, she went to a fit, right? And then she would be naked because, you know, because of sometimes her movements, her ropes would be disrobed. And she was naked and she asked Muhammad Sallallahu to make dua for her to cure her from this illness. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked to her. Well, the fact that you have this, perhaps you, be, you will be purified by Allah. That at the time of death, you are left with no sins. Right? So do you want me to make dua to Allah to remove you from all this? So she thought about it and she said, well, make dua to Allah that when I get my feet epilepsy, I don't get naked. And this is a very beautiful hadith, right? That things happen to us, only Allah knows, right? Um, we are just his slave. We just need to uh, ensure that we are patient. We remain uh, in our acts of worship, asking Allah to guide us constantly. Yeah, And, and so, sisters, these six articles of it, I hope I'm able, I was able to uh, present this in the most interesting way that all of us are able to really grasp this knowledge that we are able to truly, truly, truly not just believe, but believe with certainty about these six articles of faith so that all of us are able to submit to Allah completely. Yeah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with the ability to understand to have this faith and the aqidah in, in our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to be able to be among those whom he is pleased with at all times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings and for our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us with the ability to meet the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to be able to um, 
be guided at all times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us and our family members jannah for the doubts. Jazakum al khalis, subhanahu wa ta'ala, shudu ala ala anta, wa astaghfuka wa atubu alayhi, subhanahu wa ta'ala, rabbika rabbil inza, ta'ma yasifun, wa salamu ala al-mursalin, wa alhamdulillah ibn alamin, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Don't forget 3.30 later, inshallah, about the signs and the characters of people of jannah. And we make dua that we're among these people. Okay, assalamualaikum, inshallah, we'll see you at 3.30 on YouTube. Yeah, assalamualaikum.